Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go over the first problem in Project Euler. Just as an example and just as a walkthrough to show you how much you already know and the fact that you have gotten this far, you should be able to solve quite a few problems. Not as easily as if you had more experience and more knowledge, but we got to start somewhere, okay? So let's just start the first um, problem and then the rest is on you. I'm going to ask you to do a few more if you can. Um, so if we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6, and 9. The sum of these multiples is 23. Find the sum of all multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000 sum of all multiples three of three or five below 1,000. So it's going to be a for loop, right? Because you're going to have to go through all um, values from 0 to 1,000 or 1 to 1,000, okay? Um, i is less than 1,000. So remember, below 1,000, not up including 1,000, and then i plus plus, right? So all values, and now for each number, 1, 2, 3, 4, you can make this a 1 if you want to, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all of those going up, how do we determine if it's a multiple of 3 or 5, or any multiple? Well, to determine if something is a multiple, you probably have to take the number and divide by whatever, 3 or 5, okay, and that has to equal a integer, right? How do we do that? It's up. There's several ways you can actually do it. You could say, what if there is no remainder? That's my favorite. Okay, so number, remember, to determining the remainder. That's the remainder divided by 3 equals 0. So in other words, if it was 1 divided by 3, 0 remainder 1. 2 is 0 remainder 2. And it keeps going on, okay? So if it was 3, 3 divided by 3, um, 1 remainder 0. So it would be, the remainder would be 0. That is um, um, a multiple, okay? That's one way. What you could also do is number, remember this. Number divided by 3. So what this says is that give me the whole number, the integer, when you divide this number divided by 3. So 1 divided by 3 equals 0, 2 divided by 3 equals 0, 3 divided by 3 equals 1, 4 divided by 3 equals 1, 5 divided by 3 equals 1, 6 divided by 3 equals 2, right? So if this number, if this number, 1 divided by 3, is equal to this number, that must be an integer. I mean, I'm sorry, that must be a multiple, right? The number itself must be a multiple of 3. Because in order to get a whole number here, this is always a whole number, an integer. This is only an integer if it, there's no remainder and if it's truly a multiple, okay? So if we could do it one of these two ways. If, let's do it the first way because it's nice and easy, but it makes no difference. Um, I divided by... 3 equals 0. Okay, remember, the multiple of 3 or 5. So you could do either one. So remember, shift um, the back, shift backslash. So it makes these characters. So that's the or sign. Um, how about I divided by, divided by 5 equals I divided by 5. How about we do that? Okay, we, we, we do one of each. And so if this, if either one of this or this is true, we have to add the sum of all of these together. Okay, so how do we add those together? There's several different ways of doing that. Um, what I'm going to probably say is have an integer called sum. But I can't declare the integer here because as soon as we leave there, it's going to go ahead and delete it. So I'm going to put it up here. So int sum equals 0. Okay, then sum equals sum plus i. Okay, so if these are false, it'll just continue on and, and not count this. But if this either one of this is true or this is true, it will add on to the sum and get us our total. And we can print the results in the very end. 
All right. Well, let's. Here goes nothing. Okay. I hope that's the right answer because that's what I'm getting. Okay. There's several other ways that which which we could have done this. Also, we could have created a list. What would we have done? We could have sent list um, sum equals keep it an empty list. And if this is true, then we would say sum dot add right i correct and then but unfortunately we would have a list right it's a big huge list how do you add that together you're gonna need another for loop this is just another way i'm not saying it's a better way actually you need zero some dot length Okay, so we're going to create a new integer. Remember, this is the zero space, so we have to have zero sum dot length. So it will go the length of the of the string of the list, excuse me, and go through each element. And what you would have to do is declare another so uh, integer answer equals zero. Notice that if you were going to do multiplication. You can't multiply by zero because everything's going to be zero, so you'd have to put that as one, the default value. So answer equals answer times one. So answer times one, and you keep going on. I think you know what I mean. So since this is we're adding, keep the zero. If we're multiplying, make it a one, so that when you multiply times i, assuming it's not a zero, it will get you the. What's what when you multiply things? What is that? The product. You would get the product. Okay. Um, Answer so answer answer equals um answer plus sum i okay so this would add everything answer equals answer plus sum and would it would go through the entire list and add it all up so we have to say answer and I think that's the same value so so that's another way of actually doing it why am I just doing it this way just to show you there's different ways of actually doing it this one's much harder of course is better just to add the sum but um, when I first solved this for the first time it was a mess I had a for loop for the three um, uh, um, multiple I had a for loop for the I I added them in lists I concated, concatenated both lists. I hate that word, concatenated. So you put together the lists. Then I went through another loop to get rid of some of the um, repeat duplicates because you didn't want to duplicate both of them because it was multiple of three or five. Um, then and, and I didn't know the two set. Remember the two set um, method itself. I didn't know what that was um, at the time. So I had to have a new loop to remove all duplicates. Then I had to do another loop to add everything together. And the thing was a mess. It was like three pages long. But at the same time, it got the answer right. And that's really the key. It's there's several ways of getting there. And only through experience will you really know how to take these shortcuts and will you start thinking actually in ways of solving this. That's just experience. So don't feel bad. If, if the way of getting there is just a complete and utter mess, you'll get better with time. Okay, so I hope this was helpful just going through the first of the uh, projects. Um, hopefully you'll go through more and really struggle through it a little bit. Really try to go ahead and Google some answers themselves, get some clues and how to do it. But but try to do it yourself to learn. Okay, so proof positive. You do know enough to program the basics. We're going to keep going on from here on out. Okay, thank you very much.